This is going to be a quick look at the Ravens' ninth possession. I'm kind of surprised by some of these things as I watch this more and more throughout the week. First of all, it um, it kind of makes me laugh, some of the things that Munkin is doing to manipulate defenses, some of the potential is, is, that is there later on um, after we've shown these things. But this, again, is the ninth possession. The Bengals have just closed to 27-24, so we're going to go through each play. Uh, first and 10, unbalanced, 21 personnel. Unbalanced means you've got left guard, right tackle, and left tackle all on the left side. Uh, they're doing it smartly, though, in that Makari is the outside guy. And the Bengals, look, think about this. This Bengals defense, as good as they are, as hard-nosed as they are, they have not seen Gus Edwards. 2021, he was out for the whole year. He did play some last year. I didn't think he was completely healthy uh, throughout the season. I thought we really only saw him, a healthy version of Gus Edwards, maybe twice. I'm not too sure what games it was, but at this point, we've used this formation multiple times. Is there the opportunity for us to do something, you know, to the other side? Yeah, there is, but we haven't done it yet. It kind of surprises me that this continues to work. We only got two yards here, but it'll work later on in the in the drive here in a moment uh, for a critical first down on a third down run by Gus. Second and eight, and uh, this is brilliant. 22 personnel. We're trying to close the game out. So the Bengals match with their base defense. That's their 3-4 front. So they don't have the nickel on the field. And we run fast sweep to the top side. I do not think this is QB power read from the standpoint that Lamar is reading this. He is looking at Sam Hubbard, and you can see that uh, Simpson is pulling to potentially either kick him out or you know run up field. I don't think this is a read. I think this is a give all the way, just my intuition. Nothing Lamar is doing wrong, but let's talk about for a moment what we're doing. Andrews is going to get the front side inside linebacker. The other tight end likely is going to get the corner. I wish he was going to get the safety. Leave the corner for the fullback or the tailback, which in this case is Gus. Uh, likely starts to go to the safety. Actually, as I say that, it looks like he's looking in this direction, and safe, since the safety's not pressing, then he goes and gets the corner, so that makes sense. Maybe that's why the timing of this is messed up, because Gus is supposed to go get the corner and likely reads that the safety doesn't show. You're not going to go – I mean, imagine the safety like ran to center field. You're not going to tell likely to go get the safety. The safety ran to center field. He's out of the equation. We're just trying to get a first down. So maybe that's why the timing of this looks off because that safety didn't show, likely goes to get the corner, and Duve and is expecting Edwards to go full speed to the corner. Edwards slows up because he's not sure who to go get, and maybe that's why Duve ended up slowing up because normally we don't see Duve run like that on these plays. Normally he's hitting stuff 100 miles an hour, but in any case, we got five yards. I thought the potential was there for seven or eight. That kind of explains to me why the uh, timing of that was messed up. The Bengals have done this for years, dating back to 2021. I've talked about this many times in videos, and there's people who come on my channel, not Ravens fans, but people who come on my channel, you can't you can't do a three-man rush in the NFL and get away with it. I mean, they did it and got an interception against Patrick Mahomes in the 2021 AFC title game. Now, they, another element that they're doing here is they're doubling Andrews. So they're playing man with a three-man rush, and they're spying Lamar. So Hilton and the nickel or the DB over there are going to bracket Andrews, inside out, take him away. All right? Second of all, they're going to three-man rush it. You can see three-man rush, sorry. And then a spy in Logan Wilson. So Logan Wilson is assigned to deal with Lamar if Lamar scrambles. Usually when I've seen the Bengals do this, these three guys don't really, like, get up field like this. They usually kind of, like, will settle before they get to quarterback depth. They'll usually settle, like, two yards in front of the quarterback – whereby they're forcing the quarterback to run lateral, not letting him do what he does here, which is step up. Yeah, you've got Logan Wilson assigned to him, but I mean, and I, I think Logan Wilson's a really good football player, but he can't tackle Lamar Jackson if there's any space there. You could see Lamar sneaking out this way. He ends up sneaking out the other way and getting 12 yards. This is a moment where, yes, the Bengals have done this with success in the past. In terms of three-man rush with a spy, they would often spy with Sam Hubbard. It came back to haunt him here. Why? Well, Lamar has already beaten him with the scramble many times in this game. Um, I'm interested in what they do the next time they play us. Quite sure that Luana Romo will have a different plan in some of these situations, but that was a huge moment. The Bengals kind of showed their hand. Lamar wasn't pressured at all. And then once he saw Andrews was doubled, he just took off. 
This one makes me laugh. 21 personnel. So Ricard and Andrews are on. And this is ridiculous. Like, you've got Ricard and two receivers down here to the left. Additionally, you've got an unbalanced line. So to the to the Ravens' left of the midline, you've got six players. And we're going to pull Ricard opposite, and then Lamar is going to read the option away. So he's reading this guy here. This is a situation, me personally, I want to make this guy make the tackle if possible. Kind of like that fast sweep that we talked about. But look, this is a great job by 96. Like, give him credit. This is a fantastic play. He runs with Lamar while trying to keep as square as possible so that he can not get outflanked. Now he runs. It's a beautiful play by 96. You got to give him credit on that. Personally, I feel like we got to get the safety and the strong side inside linebacker blocked on that. I don't think Zay Flowers, look, he's not going to be able to handle Logan Wilson other than just get in his way for a moment. I'd want to see us go here and here. And 20 is DJ Turner, sat talented player. But I want, I want to see him make the tackle as the outside corner. It's a read. I'd be okay if we gave the daggone thing, to be honest with you. We just showed it and gave it. But in any case, Munkin is putting a different kind of pressure on the Bengals. Multiple kinds of concepts. This one shocked me. Same formation, 22 personnel to the field. Same exact formation elicits the base defense of the Bengals on second and nine. I mean, wow. Talk, talk about evidence that the Bengals' defensive staff did not – You're talk, it was just three plays ago. I think it was three plays ago. Where same exact formation, same exact play. I'm, I'm shocked that no one on the headset was like, Coach's 22 personnel on second and nine, come on. They're not, they're not relining up and running power. They're not going to run option, although we did just run option on the previous play. My point is I am shocked – and I think this is indication that Munkin had the Bengals defensive staff on their heels trying to adapt to what he did. Basically, and if you look at this, the way this is blocked, I think this reinforces what I talked about a couple of plays ago. Watch Andrews go get the front side inside linebacker. Watch Likely go up to the safety who shows this time. Again, imagine the safety rolls back here for some crazy reason. Then, you know, Likely going to go get the corner. You're not going to leave him unblocked. If there's, if there's two guys there, you go get the, the guy you're assigned to get. If your guy doesn't show, but look at what they do. Actually, Likely goes and gets the front side inside linebacker. linebacker. They leave the, the safety and the corner unblocked, and we get seven yards. Almost uh, hit, hit this one big. If this guy overflows a little bit further. If, if Gus is able to kick that guy out a little bit, let, let Duve press a little bit more to the outside. Not go to the outside, but press the outside and then bring this back under. This almost hits, if you ask me. Brilliant call by Munkin, don't get me wrong, but at some point we're going to have to line up 22 personnel Pro Twins B to the field, and we're going to have to throw the football. We're not going to be able to do this every time we line up in this throughout the season and people not adjust to it. And then... Another one that just made me chuckle, especially watching it over the week. 22 jumbo. So we're not going unbalanced. Like I talked about earlier, we bring the sixth offensive lineman on the field. Moses stays over here at actual right tackle. And Falele is an eligible tight end. We did this earlier to them, and they roll to the 6-1 look. What are they in too high safety structure for? It's third and two. The game is on the line. What are those guys defending? And I'm a big fan of Lou Anarumo from the standpoint of appreciating what he does, marveling at the way he's able to stop people. But what are the two safeties doing there? What are they stopping? Nothing. They're not defending anything. Gus gets six yards. I don't know. This, if, if you're a Bengals fan and you watch this long, I'm, I'm not one that's always critical of the Bengals. I'm, I'm quite sure some Ravens fans are pissed off at me sometimes for praising their defense so much. This is a situation where... I feel like if I was coaching on the sidelines, the place where I grew up, the fans will let you know. They will wait for you in the parking lot. Hey, why did you have too high safety structure on that third and one when we're trying to get a stop and get the ball back? Some people in my town didn't like that. Man, I loved it. I loved that there was people like that who were so passionate. They want their kids to win, and the expectation level is high. My expectation level for Lou Anarumo and that group they got on defense – is to adjust, and in this case, they did not. Gus, they haven't dealt with Gus before. He's a different animal. He's a different guy than J.K. He's a different guy than Justice Hill. Clearly a different guy than Kenyon Drake. Credit to Todd Munkin for manipulating them on that ninth possession in the, in the 58th, 
59th and 60th minute of the game. That right there tells me all I need to know about the guy we got running the offense and the staff that's behind him. You guys let me know what you thought of the ninth possession. Live, I was nervous, but watching it now for probably the fourth time, uh, it just makes me laugh that we were able to manipulate them like that. And and part of the laughter is because I don't think we'll be able to manipulate that again them again with those same personnel groupings and those same formations. But what I suspect about Todd Munkin is, and I forget who it was that said this years ago. I'm an old man, so I remember it. What I suspect about Todd Munkin is, is this might be one of his ma mantras. Just when they think they ch they know the answers, I'm going to change the questions. I think he'll do this every week to different teams in different manners and have a plan for these moments to close out the game. Appreciate you guys' time. If you think other Ravens fans would enjoy this video, please consider sharing it out on social media to help this content get more reach.